Okay, so this is the first in a series of three videos about my updated Windows and Linux partitioning script. And that updated script is this here, the, uh, the Xbox One HDD Master 5.zip. There'll be links in the description of this video where to download it. Basically, this version of the script obsoletes all the prior versions because unlike the prior versions of the scripts, the Windows and Linux scripts, this particular version allows you to build a real official, well, maybe not official, but a real two terabyte drive that any version of the Xbox One, the OG or the S, is able to reset and see as a two terabyte drive. In the past, in order to use a two terabyte drive in your Xbox One, you essentially use the Windows partitioning script or the Linux partitioning script to create a 500 gigabyte drive and then uh, you would get the drive working and then you'd use a tool like Gparted to stretch it, particularly the, the user content partition to, uh, to fill out the two terabyte drive. If you had an existing working 500 gigabyte drive, you would clone it to a two terabyte drive and again do the same thing, use Gparted to stretch the user content drive. Going forward, using the latest version of the scripts, you'll be able to build a brand new two terabyte drive or a brand new one terabyte drive or a brand new brand new 500 gigabyte drive like you've always been able to do and use OSU1 to build it from scratch and that's in any Xbox One system so whether you, it, it's a 500 gigabyte drive system that you purchased a one terabyte or a two terabyte system that you purchased it, it doesn't matter you can swap to any drive that you want at any given time because as it turns out the Xbox One doesn't necessarily specify what type of drive it can use it just looks to see what the GUID label of the disk actually is. What I have here is a, a table which displays basically the structure, the partition structure of an Xbox One drive. And I'm going to quickly explain what the new versions of the scripts do, the version 5 of the script. Again, I'll, uh, this guy here. And uh, so what this chart shows here is that essentially there are five partitions on an Xbox One drive denoted here by the, uh, the SDB 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And these are actually the Linux equivalent of these partitions. On the Windows, or if you're using the Windows partitioning script, you'll see the partitions as U, V, W, X, and Y. Now here at the top, this refers to the disk. That's why there's no number here at the end. And the first item here, so we have all the drives listed here. So basically what this table shows is the GUID values of the disk and the partitions. Then it has the device IDs. This is Linux and then this is Windows. And then you have the different sizes of the partitions. And then you have the name of the actual partitions and or if it's a disk or if it's unallocated space as you see here. And lastly, this is the drive type that the line applies to. So for instance, the first three items here are the, uh, the possible disk GUIDs. So the first item here is for two terabyte drives and the second is for one terabyte and the third is for 500 gigabyte. This uh, is actually the most significant bit here. This is what uh, this person here, Adric. Uh, this is a discovery that he made on what actually is the difference between a two terabyte and a one terabyte and a 500 gigabyte drive. And uh, I'll go into a little bit of the history in just a bit, but let me, I, I just wanted to finish the structure here real quick. So depending on the type of drive that you're building, whether it's a two terabyte or a one terabyte or a 500 gigabyte drive, this will be the value that you'll see. So you'll never have all these three things applied to a drive but you'll have one of these three things applied to the drive that you're building. Okay, so the next portion of this table here is the five partitions. And for all the drives you create, and that's where you see this all here, four out of the five partitions will always be the same. So they'll always have this, G in fact, the, as far as the partitions are concerned, they always have the same GUID for any of these drive types, the two, the one, terabyte or the 500 gigabyte. However, the user content size will differ. So that's why you see these extra two lines here. 
The uh, the GUID applies to all three, the two terabyte, one terabyte, and 500 gigabyte, and the name is also the same. However, the, the size differs. So in a two terabyte drive, you would have 1,662 gigabytes given to user content. And then a one terabyte drive, you'd have 781 gigabytes. And on a 500 gigabyte drive, you'd have 365 gigabytes given to user content. So aside from the GOID differing, which matters for when you reset the system, you'll see that the user content differs depending on which one of these types of drives that you're building. So those are the two major differences between a two terabyte, a one terabyte, and a 500 gigabyte drive. And as I said before, up until this point, uh, we had always been using this GUID to apply to all the disks that we've been creating, which isn't correct. And one other thing I wanted to point out here is the unallocated space for each type. What is what I find kind of annoying is on a 500 gigabyte drive, you're only wasting about 779 megabytes of data or unallocated space at the end of the drive. However, for whatever reason, with, with the one terabyte and the two terabyte drives, Microsoft has decided to waste uh, quite a bit more space. So on the one terabyte drives, there's uh, basically 50.5 gigabytes left off the end. And then with a uh, two terabyte drive, there's 100 gigabytes that you're wasting, which uh, is kind of interesting because with a 500 gigabyte drive, you only have 365 gigabytes to work with to begin with. So to get a larger size drive and then to waste these amounts seems kind of crazy to me. But anyways, it, uh, it is what it is. So, one of the, so what I'm going to cover basically in my next video is I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk through the Windows partitioning script and show you some of the new features and basically how to use it to create each drive type. And then in my third video, I'm gonna use the Linux partitioning script and show you how to create each drive. And at the end of both of those videos, I'll show the drive in action in an Xbox One, uh, basically the process of getting it working after you've run the two scripts that I've linked to in this video and I'll link to in the next two videos. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention here is a little bit of the history of what I've been doing. Basically, uh, I, I created this script back in uh, June of 2016. And I just figured I'd give some credit to the people that have helped me a lot in, in creating the Windows partitioning script. And even the whole concept of upgrading Xbox One Drive. So the first person I want to give credit to is Juvenile of Team Executor. In 2013, or November of 2013, which is when the Xbox One was released, uh, he was able to figure out how to build or repair or replace your 500 gigabyte drive right from the beginning. And he created a uh, Python script which allowed you to basically uh, properly format an Xbox One drive at the time. And he was the first to do that. He wrote it in Python, it worked fine, and it ran on Linux. And um, that script actually worked great, or his process rather, uh, worked great right up until about, I believe October of 2015 when they made the switch from Windows 8 to Windows 10 on the Xbox One. After that, you couldn't create a two terabyte drive from scratch, you basically have to create a working 500 gigabyte drive and then use Clonezilla to copy it over to a larger drive and then use GPAR to increase it. And that's because for whatever reason, Microsoft made it so that when you're initializing a drive, if the partition sizes aren't quite right, it, uh, it won't work right. Games won't be licensed. Um, they, they'll install, but you won't be able to run them. Or if you are able to run them, you won't be able to run them a second time. And there's a few other strange problems you'll see. This did work for a couple of years, uh, Juvenile's Python script. Shortly, or, or less than a year after that, Ludwig created a bash script, which basically did the same thing that Juvenile was doing. Um, however, instead of using Python, Juvenile used Python, which generated a bash script, which you then ran the bash script. It wasn't overly difficult to use, but it was a little cumbersome. So Ludwig, I don't know if he was aware of Juvenile's work, 
but he created a bash script which was independent of that which uh, or independent of the juvenile script which allowed you to basically do the same thing except written purely in bash and that's the script that I've included in the download I was showing you here this this guy here in the Linux directory of the zip file is basically his script with updates that I've made to allow for this new um, GUID structure or support for this new GUID structure. And that's where I come into play here. In uh, last year basically, or a year ago from today, um, I created a Windows batch script based upon Ludwig's work to create a, a, basically a Windows native script. So instead of having to boot up a copy of Linux from a flash drive, usually using Ubuntu or something like that, and then running the script, you could do everything now on Windows. So you could attach an empty brand new drive to a Windows machine and run the Windows batch script to properly format that drive. And I just put a link in the actual scripts to my YouTube channel to help people out who have somehow come across my scripts but aren't aware of my videos, or vice versa. And lastly, we have Adric here who only about two weeks ago sent a message to me on my YouTube channel. He made a comment on my YouTube channel saying that he had made a discovery about how you can make two terabyte Xbox One drives that are resettable. And what's more is building two terabyte Xbox One drives on any system that will treat it like it's a native two terabyte system. Uh, which is great. I really appreciate him uh, him helping me out with that and sending me that information so that we could get the scripts that basically I'm announcing in this video uh, created and then shared out to the public. So I really do appreciate him for doing that. In the past, we were always using this 500 gigabyte drive GUID for increasing or putting a larger disk into the uh, the Xbox One. And that was because at the time, this is going back to November of 2013, there was no such thing as a one terabyte system or a two terabyte system. In fact, the first Xbox One two terabyte system was the Xbox One S and that was introduced in, I believe, July of 2016. It hasn't even been, or maybe it might have even been August. So it hasn't even quite been a year since, uh, since there have been two terabyte drives. And on top of that, or official two terabyte drives, and uh, on top of that, it was just a limited release. So I think there was only about a month or two that they were actually on sale. So it took quite a bit of time before someone could actually thought to, and um, Ajik is that person who, uh, who thought to actually take out the two terabyte drive and examine it or, or, or see what made that drive different than a 500 gigabyte drive. So the next step is going to be creating a video using the Windows version of, of the script to format a drive. And then I'll create a third video using the Linux script to create a, uh, a new Xbox One drive. And in both cases, I'm going to create a, basically a two terabyte layout. And I'm going to show you that on my Xbox One system I have here. I have this all rigged up here so that um, it's easy for me to get the drive out and um, and format it and get it back in the system and get it working. And uh, this is an older system. This is a 500 gigabyte system originally. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the OG, the, the non Xbox One S systems never actually had a two terabyte release. So this will be kind of cool. So I can show you that on even on the older systems that uh, a two terabyte drive works just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna get to creating those videos and uh, and I'm happy to be able to get this one finally out.